Our study is looking at the role of newer P2Y12 inhibitors, uh, so prasagril and ticagrelor, and comparing them to clopidogrel, which has been the standard of care for dual antiplatelet therapy in patients with acute MI that is complicated by cardiac arrest and cardiogenic shock. My name is Dr. Saras Chandra Vallabhajosila. I'm an interventional and a critical care cardiologist at Wake Forest University in North Carolina. I'm here to talk about a recent study that was accepted in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our study is entitled Newer P2Y12 Inhibitors versus Clopidogrel in Acute Myocardial Infarction with Cardiac Arrest or Cardiogenic Shock, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. This study is slated to be published in June 2022, edition of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Uh, first of all, my gratitude to Mayo Clinic Proceedings for giving me this opportunity to speak and to the journal itself for accepting our manuscript. We're really excited about this paper. Uh, so as you may well know, acute MI is unfortunately very prevalent in our society, it continues to be a leading cause for cardiovascular mortality and morbidity. Through multiple techniques, primarily with revascularization using primary PCI, we've been able to significantly change the trajectory of these patients and offer them good outcomes. But high-risk conditions in patients with acute MI, such as cardiogenic shock and cardiac arrest, have um, close to 50% mortality despite all the strong medical therapy and revascularization techniques that we have at our disposal. So it's in these patients that we need to identify uh, uh, improved signals to how to better care for these patients. Off late in patients with acute MI, there has been a lot of data that's come out that shows newer P2Y12 inhibitors, which are used to provide dual antiplatelet therapy, uh, such as prasagril and ticagrelor, have been superior to the gold standard of clopidogrel, which was uh, the first P2Y12 inhibitor. So obviously the next logical question to ask is, uh, how do these uh, medications fare in patients with cardiogenic shock and cardiac arrest, which are high risk conditions? These two disease states are unique in that uh, they have multi-system morbidity in patients with acute MI. They have decreased GI absorption because of gut ischemia. Often these patients have respiratory failure and need to be mechanically ventilated, and so they cannot do the suck and swallow of the pills as efficiently as somebody who's not intubated. These patients have uh, hepatic uh, dysfunction, have renal dysfunction, all of which inhibit the excretion and the bioavailability of all these medications. So this constitutes a very specific subset. Also, you have to understand that these patients are often on things like uh, continuous renal replacement therapy, on mechanical circulatory support, either with impeller, IBP, or an external circuit such as an ECMO. And therefore, their uh, pharmacokinetics is significantly affected by uh, just the extension of the body into these circuits or the circulation into these circuits. So therefore, uh, we studied this in a meta-analytic fashion. We had close to 1,100 patients across the seven studies that we put together in this meta-analysis. And uh, we, interestingly, a lot of them were retrospective in nature. Only one was a, a randomized trial, which is typical for the data that comes of this space. Unlike most of cardiology, where we have tens and thousands of patients randomized into carefully selected cohorts, uh, cardiogenic shock and cardiac arrest are limited by recruitment because of the acuity of the status and because of how uncommon it is. Oftentimes, we don't have the large sample sizes that we get in the rest of general cardiology. So um, the major high headline findings of our <clears throat> study were that we found a improved mortality at short term. So short term is defined, in our study was defined as uh, in hospital, 28 day or uh, 30 day, depending on how the studies uh, projected these data, because we were obviously amalgamating existing studies. And we showed an improved mortality with prasagril and ticagrel as compared to clopidogrel. This is certainly consistent with the signal across uh, general acute MI population, both STEMI and non STEMI, and it's very encouraging. It uh, also, these newer P2 vital inhibitors have been associated with higher bleeding and higher rates of complications, which we did not show in our study, which is also a positive uh, signal, the lack of differences in bleeding. And we did not have any differences in stent thrombosis, which again is a testament to the evolution of uh, stent technologies over time. So uh, this is a definitely an important study in terms of what it adds to the literature in this space. For me, as an interventional cardiologist and a critical care cardiologist, I transact in this space all the time. So I find it very relevant to my practice and has definitely influenced my practice. And I hope that it adds to the practice of other people. Obviously, uh, the limitations of our study, this being a meta-analysis, is limited by the 
quality of the data that is at, uh, available at our disposal. So if six out of seven studies were retrospective, they come with the associated biases that uh, come in a retrospective study. Um, obviously, um, we need more powered, adequately powered, carefully designed long-term analyses of these patients. Uh, in a subgroup where we included three studies that looked at long-term mortality or one-year mortality, they had a neutral signal. Also, it's important to understand that uh, cardiac arrest and cardiogenic shock, though similar, are not the same. People behave differently in cardiac arrest than they do in cardiogenic shock. Sometimes these disease states overlap, sometimes they don't. Um, our signal was largely driven by cardiogenic shock because that's where the largest mortality and the largest number of studies were. So maybe specific studies relating to cardiac arrest or even uh, more enriched studies in the space of cardiogenic shock are probably needed to help understand uh, this issue in its entirety so that we can provide appropriate personalized care for our patients at their bedside. Thank you for your attention. And uh, my email is available on the study uh, details. Please feel free to reach out should you have additional questions for me or my team. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.